In this week, we have undertaken a wide survey and analysis of surveillance laws and practices. We have canvassed the development and growth of international intelligence sharing practices. We have assessed the nature of a number of domestic legal frameworks to better understand the legal controls on surveillance and the goals of national security, especially in relation to the collection and analysis of metadata. We have heard Mr. Ren Gady of the US National Counterterrorism Center speak to the usefulness of metadata and collection activities in ensuring national security priorities. While a large focus of this module has been an emphasis on maintaining security, I must acknowledge that there is a residual disquiet held by many about retaining our privacy in this new environment, ensuring that we can live our lives without the nagging suspicion that we're being monitored, that our sense of autonomy might be somehow compromised through our necessary reliance on digital means of communication and social interaction. On the other hand, we have expectations about our safety and security that we directly place on our governments. We do this because it is the government that has the greatest capacity to track adversaries and to protect us against cyber and physical attacks, both domestically and internationally. Governments, defence and security agencies feel this responsibility very acutely. As we will hear in week five, offensive cyber capacity has developed so significantly and so quickly, and the threat is so real, that the laws applicable to the use of force and the law of armed conflict in international law have recently been reinterpreted and applied in this context by the experts who participated in the Tallinn manual process. We must always keep in mind the international picture and what capacities other governments and non-state actors have even as we try to condition the manner in which our own government can undertake surveillance and collection activity. We want to be perfectly protected and perfectly free at the same time. We know that governments are best placed to ensure our national security, and yet there is an abiding suspicion of overreach, of not getting the balance right. These themes were canvassed in a recent UK parliamentary report that was undertaken by the Intelligence and Security Committee of Parliament and whose conclusions and observations are both timely and relevant to this course. In reviewing the practice of UK intelligence agencies and the legal framework that underpinned surveillance activity in the UK, the committee was able to verify that metadata collection and analysis has enabled UK security agencies to successfully counter terrorist threats, that metadata analysis is actually very time and resource intensive that UK agencies, quote, are not reading the emails of everyone in the UK, and that, quote, bulk in interception systems operate on a very small percentage of bearers. The report also acknowledged that it was essential that agencies can discover unknown threats through use of bulk interception, but that, in the case of the UK agencies, that they have operated in accordance with UK human rights law. Such legislation was considered to be necessary in that it acted to constrain overreach by requiring all activities to satisfy the triple test of legality, necessity and proportionality. Most tellingly, though, was the following observation that was contained in the report. Quote, While we recognise privacy concerns about bulk interception, we do not subscribe to the point of view that it is acceptable to let some terrorist attacks happen in order to uphold individual rights to privacy nor do we believe that the vast majority of the British public would. In principle, it is right that intelligence agencies would have this capability provided, and it is this that is essential, that it is tightly controlled and subject to proper safeguards.